Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode today. Uh, well, actually another episode. I don't know if this should be a part of the Serene series. I think this is more just a water shader kind of show off. Um, yeah, <laughs> pretty interesting. But today, yeah, I'm going to be showing you how to make some very beautiful and very interesting water in Unity with the Universal Render Pipeline shader graph. Uh, I'm pretty sure this will also work in high definition render pipeline uh but i'll have to test that out and uh get back to you on that um first of all before we start the video please subscribe our channel is growing quite a lot and it's really really cool actually um be awesome if you could be a part of it also uh join our discord you know that's also gaining some members you can ask for help there uh show off your stuff that you're doing yeah if you're looking for someone to play something with you know it's it's always always available cool um i set up this little scene yesterday um i actually did this part today but uh let's just if we just input a random seed here we can randomize this let's let's make create a huge world um as you can see <laughs> we're creating a world and it's creating this shader uh well this this plane of terrain uh, of of stuff underneath it now this stuff is um it's taking me a while to make this and it's quite, quite, not, quite beautiful. Also has waves integrated and a shoreline. Anyway, let's get into the shader. Really interesting shader. Kind of complex, but I'll, uh, I'll attempt to go through it the best I can. Uh, this took me quite a while to make. Um, so I've split it into different parts. There's also a lot of settings. <laughs> so you might want to make those now. Um, but we'll go from the start. So vertex offset. So this is, so imagine we have like a flat plane, which we do, by the way, I'm actually gonna, uh, yeah, so right here, as you can see, you got like the mesh here that's, um, actually procedurally generated from this code here to perfectly match the size of our chunks, well, our, um, terrain. So in the, st in the generate method here, we've got a little bit of a, uh, method that creates the, the terrain for us um but yeah so we're, we're, complete, we're procedurally generating the water tile and then we're assigning the uh texture to it well the material to it with the shader graph so let me just go back over here get a good view of it inside our vertex offset we're, we're sending a time node into a vector 2 and what this is doing is we're getting a perfectly uh you know uv mapped version of gradient noise and then we're obviously changing the offset of it so we're moving the noise to make this kind of wave motion uh now you could use sine waves other but it's not very it's it's just kind of that otherwise we'll be going back and forth to the same noise and then yeah you, you kind of want a little bit of randomness in there now next we're getting the position uh because we need to take the x and y position and only change the y position that's what the gradient noise is so essentially, this here is determining the Y position plus that, and that, and then we're sending it, I don't know why that multiplies there, that's doing absolutely nothing, I think that was from something else, but we're sending the data that we got, the height, uh, and we're only changing the Y value of this vector 3, and we're outputting this vector 3 into the vertex position. Now note that this isn't changing the actual vertex of, it's just a shader, it's, uh, I'm not sure if it changes the hitboxes, uh, so you'll have to think about that. Uh, you might want to just do that by code, maybe. That that's kind of why I've um, <laughs> I've structured this how I have. Cool. So what's next? Probably the normals. Cool. So the normals in this, if you didn't know, that's actually what's causing this effect where we're seeing um kind of you know them we're seeing the waves the really small ripples kind of uh it's actually done by two normal maps moving side to side from one another so the way we're doing that is we're getting the normal map we've got normal one and normal two you can also change this in the inspector when you're setting a material um and we're doing the same things we did up here so we're getting a uh we're changing the offset and tiling of our uh, normals based on noise so essentially if you think about uh, normals being tiled 
uh, one, two, three, one, two, three. It's just moving along them and it's just doing that infinitely. Um, the same thing down here, we're just doing that to the second one. Then we're blending the two normals together to get this really cool normal map where one is moving up and one's moving down. Well, actually, that's kind of moving uh, northeast, so one's going southwest. But um, normal fall off. So what that what this is is if you if you see here right it has a nice kind of non sharp looking water normals because this is how it would look in real life but if I would uh, turn up our water what are they, water fall off our uh, um our normal change distance all the way up as you can see it gets really sharp in the and over there and that's not really what would happen uh because we probably see it as quite you know quite nice and and light so if you if you want to turn that down you can and it's just kind of softening that the the further away it gets uh it's a small it's a small amount of change but it helps a lot so the way this works is uh we're taking the essentially let me just rearrange these so it's easier to see so we're getting the distance of the camera so we're getting the uh the distance between the position um of the vertex or of the very point that it's going to render and the camera we get the distance between that uh, and then we're dividing it by the normal change distance so that's how far we want it then we're remapping it because obviously so if if you can imagine it goes from uh one to zero from the distance we're rearranging it so it goes zero to one um so then it's doing the lower values first so then uh we can gradient uh of that for the normals and then we're clamping it between a value uh and one so 0 0.3 is just mainly that's like kind of a minimum uh normal that we can have and then we're plugging that straight into a normal strength node uh through the normal blend and then then we're just plugging that straight into the normal tangent smoothness right here you have just created a flow value called smoothness you can just plug that straight in it's determining the shininess of the water. If you didn't know, it's just like re like just the same as all the other smoothness. Uh, yeah, it's it's pretty basic. It, nothing special. Um, you know, I, I, I like 0.7. It's, like, it's not as kind of sharp as 0.1. It seems a bit more natural. Cool. Now for the color. So we've got a really basic water color here. Um, the way I actually have it set in here apparently. Uh, so pretty much we're getting the water color we're getting water darkness multiplying it by what's down here I'll explain this in a second and then we're dividing them together to be able to make the water darker based on the depth of the water next we're chucking this into a clamp node and this is for the simple fact that we don't want it to go below certain values and above certain values otherwise you can get really overexposed water and really underexposed water uh, next we've got seafoam color. This isn't super important as it's kind of just doing uh, the edges here. It's kind of highlighting the edges around uh, islands. So it looks a little, maybe a little bit more tropical or cool looking. And then finally down here on the scene depth, we are getting the camera position, multiplying this far plane with the scene depth. And then we're subtracting our screen position screen position with a split node uh the, the like the a channel of the split of the screen position multiplying it by the depth that we want our water we're adding it sorry subtracting it from the uh multiplying by scene depth and stuff plugging that into a multiply node uh we can set the depth strength here and then we're, that's what we're plugging straight into where were the water darkness is because as we want it to be more deep we want the water to be more dark and uh, that's also why we have a clamp node here is because we don't want it to be too black um like too dark too dark because uh you know you you don't you ha don't have true black in water it's always kind of a bluish cool uh now you have the sea foam strength that's literally just controlling how strong the sea foam that foam is i can show you that in here if we go back out here and we go over here sea foam strength as you can see as i as i do this it's like sticking more to kind of like the shores i can have it do something like this and have it like quite far um i don't know <laughs> it doesn't look right <laughs> so I, i'd probably recommend to keep that quite close to the shores um where, where was that there we go 
Uh, and if you want to know what uh, it looks like with no sea foam, well, uh, can I even do that? I don't think I can. I haven't said a thing to disable sea foam. Wow, oh, cool. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, and then over here, we're just multiplying it by a transparency value, uh, the, all, the whole scene depth, and we're plugging that straight into the alpha, so then that's the overall transparency of the water. Uh, if you want to have it, like, kind of more of a tropical, I guess, you could uh, do something like this. You know something quite cool uh keep in mind um i kind of need to fix this so i just quickly removed the underground under part of it and just also changed the sand to make it look a bit better you know if you want a bit more transparent water uh that's that's completely up to you really uh looks a little bit more tropical when you get down to close obviously you probably won't be viewing water from this high because uh, it does get a little bit iffy and weird when you do view it from that high as it's based on the camera far plane. That's why mine's set so high. So if you are getting problems, because uh, as you can see, if I change this, it's not doing it now, but uh, sometimes it does screw around with it. Uh, I'm just going to change this back to what it was because it looked a little bit better than what it does now. You don't, also don't want it a bit, you don't want it too dark. Um... transparency up a little bit it's all about fiddling with this kind of stuff um you know what that you, that's kind of what you don't want you don't want it to be over um to go over one so kind of what you can do is you can set a transparency we can set it to a slider between zero and one so whenever it goes over one As you can see now, it kind of uh, only stays at one. You also don't want it too bright, so maybe maybe that. Then what else do we need to change? I think it was the depth. There we go. As you can see, it's really simple to change, and real it looks really beautiful when you get it from you know maybe a like a top of a mountain view like that looks pretty nice and uh, also lower down uh also the vertex change if you didn't know that's what that's doing it's moving up and it's actually done by a wave like wave so if you uh if we pull this and make the water change height where's the, the wave scale if we set that up as you can see it's actually doing it by proper waves so well not proper waves but it's doing it by like uh separate parts of it you can also change the wave speed uh sorry the height change speed as you can see whoa it's uh going crazy over here but um as you can see if you do it like that it's going up quite quickly but it goes up and down all over the beach in a kind of a cyclic kind of motion anyway guys hope you enjoyed the video i know this was a bit of a weird one it was more of like a shade of show off um than anything else if you enjoyed the video uh please leave us please leave us subscribe no please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe uh and have a great day